Hello all my beautiful sisters from those other misters. Welcome back to my channel. It's time for another Just Doing My Makeup where I'm just going to apply makeup on my face and talk about the makeup, essentially. Uh, so I've got some new things to play with today. I am going to start with my eyes and first up is going to be from Sigma. This is a Rendezvous makeup collection. So it includes the eyeshadow palette, the blush and highlight palette and the three little glittery lip glosses, plus there's a makeup bag in there. So this whole set retails for 88 US dollars. Like I said, it contains a six pan eyeshadow palette, a two pan face and highlight palette, and three mini lip glosses plus the makeup bag. Um, I'm gonna swatch this palette. I Look, this palette is just so, so me. Uh, you've got two like matte nudes, and then you've got their sort of sparkly, shimmery formula makes me think of the um like pat mcgrath's sort of special formula i suppose they're really pretty <gasps> yeah. so you can see the color story there um it's nude it's very nude but i think the important part is putting it on the face and seeing how it actually performs okay i'm gonna pop the lightest matte which is god i'm struggling this one here it's called tryst i'm just gonna pop that into my crease the pigmentation on that isn't like super intense so you can definitely do really soft looks with this which i like that's a bit more my jam historically i like sigma eyeshadows i particularly like their sort of like these sort of i, I don't even know how to describe them do sigma describe them let's find out okay they don't describe them at all which is super helpful um this one here this one here and i think maybe this one here as well um they have this sort of, it's its like a really finely milled, sparkly formula. Like it almost borders on potentially glittery. However, there's absolutely no glitter in there. Um, I really like the effect of those shades. I love how they bring a lot of like light reflection and sparkle to the eyelids. The mattes, um, I, I don't mind. This one is blending really nicely and it is soft, but like I said, I like that. That's what I go for with eyeshadows these days. It's what I gravitate to. I'm gonna pop Bootleg, which is the darker matte, in the outer corner. I quite like the formula of these. I do think they're like, I mean, they're pigmented, but it's super easy to blend and mm, it's easy to make them really soft. Um, I've layered that up quite a bit to get that color depth there. Um, I think if you're looking for like super duper punchy rich, pigmented eyeshadows the mattes in here at the very least they're not they're they're soft they do need some building but my god they blended really easily which was nice i'm gonna take moonshine which is this shade here it's one of their like beautiful sparkly lovely ones they're similar to uh some of the like special shades in the pat mcgrath palettes um i feel like they they give a very similar effect I'm just going to pop this on the inner corner or inner part of the eye. I think my MAC paint pot is just like, it's not doing it for me anymore. I, I feel like things have changed and it's just not, it doesn't have that like oomph that it has when it's new when it comes to like things adhering to the eye nicely. For matte shadows, no issue. Like everything's fine with matte eyeshadows, but I've noticed recently with like shimmery shades, they just, 
They're not getting along with that bloody primer. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna throw it in the bin in a blaze of glory. Goodbye thing that is not working for me anymore. Um, I've taken a little bit of uh, like face spray. Um, I'm using the Glow Recipe Mist. I've just popped a little bit of that on to wet my brush. And I feel like that, like, that actually allows things to grip and give that sparkly effect that these eyeshadows, like, what I know them to have. Yes, that is what I was after. Don't test me, Mac. I will throw you in the bin and not care. Okay, I'm going to keep with this sort of slightly pinky vibe that's going on with that um, moonshine shade and I'm gonna take campfire this is more of a what you would consider like just a standard shimmery formula um, I am gonna put that on just dry I've like dusted off my brush we'll see how that goes on on its own I'm struggling to like have vibes about how I feel about it. I like the matte shades because I like that soft, easy to blend thing that's going on. But with the shimmery shades, um, I don't feel like they really gripped as well as I remember them gripping, but I'm almost a little bit inclined to blame this because I feel like, I feel like I've been having issues with that for a little while now. So I'm not really gonna know how I feel until I play with it a bit more. Next thing I want to try out, this is actually something that I purchased. So the uh, Sigma collection was sent in PR and I purchased this guy. It's from Westman Atelier. It is the Baby Blender Brush. So Westman Atelier brushes are synthetic, which means they're cruelty free and they are handcrafted in Japan. So you've got the quality in those terms. Um, in Australia, this brush retails for $103, which is an eye-watering amount. Um, I wouldn't pay that much for a synthetic brush. My, Based on my experience with brushes, I feel like you can get really nice quality synthetic brushes at a very reasonable and affordable price. Um, but I am always curious. Brushes, ooh, they're, they're one of those things. They get me and I'm curious and I like to try them and I like to you know be able to compare them to other things that I've tried so I got this one I did get it on like with a discount so that makes it a lot easier to uh, stomach I'm going to use it to conceal because my ne next step is going to be to apply my base now usually I would conceal after applying foundation um, just to like you know conceal areas where I need it but um, I want to be able to see what this brush does without having foundation sort of covering stuff up so i'm going to take my concealer this is the revolution conceal and hydrate concealer i ooh, i don't know how i feel about this concealer actually um i've had good experiences with it and i've had bad experiences with it and i don't know what is making it good or bad i don't know why it's good sometimes and why it's uh not good other times i have not been able to work that out so um i'm still playing with it to try and work out how i feel okay well that is really nice um something i look for when i am using synthetic brushes that are sort of you know densely packed um, and they have fairly short bristles I'm looking to see if it leaves streaks in the finish of whatever product you're applying especially if it's cream products I'm of the opinion that if I use a brush to apply something and there's streaks in it and I then have to go over with my finger or use the brush in a patting motion to work them out it's simply not a good brush whether it be synthetic or natural hair because it does happen with both types of brushes but that has laid down the product really nicely I'll just turn down the brightness so we can see a bit closer up so you can see that it's blended everything out evenly uh, there's no streaking in the finish which is really nice it's not thick it's not heavy I feel like the brush has, it's done a good job. 
I'm gonna just do a little bit more in the areas where I typically feel like I add extra concealer after I've done my base. Yeah, I have to say that brush is actually really nice. Like I said, I, I wouldn't usually spend that sort of money on a synthetic brush, but I'm curious. So if I if I want to experience it for myself, that's I've, I've got to buy one. Um, and I wasn't expecting it to be anything special, but it's actually really nice. I like the way it has blended out that product. Um, I know at the moment I've got a bit of dry skin going on on my nose. And surprisingly enough, the hairs haven't sort of disrupted and lifted any of that dry skin. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of how soft it is. But the hairs still have quite good structure. Um, so they're very good at actually moving product and blending it out. Uh, yeah, look, I don't, I don't hate that. I think if you really enjoy bougie brushes um and you want you know you want to buy something that has a little bit of status and it's handcrafted in japan but you do not like to buy animal hair brushes which i totally respect then you might want to take a little look at westman atelia because um based on my experience with this brush it's uh it, it's it's nice Okay, next up is foundation, and I am going to be trying out a new foundation that was sent to me. It is from Rimmel. It's the Lasting Finish 25 Hour Hydration Boost Full Coverage Lightweight Foundation. So this is what she looks like. Um, they sent me the whole range of these, and I picked out I picked out one that I thought would be the right shade for me and it's pretty much an exact match for my skin, I think. And I did swatch another one, um, but I'm not gonna swatch all of these because I know that most of them are not gonna be suitable for my coloring. And I would actually really like to donate these to like a women's shelter um, because things like foundation and concealer and powder and mascara and you know, the simple basics, um, I know that women's shelters, they love them. And uh, if I'm swatching them, then I'm basically giving someone a used product. And I, I don't wanna do that. Um, so I'm not gonna swatch them all. So in Australia, this retails for $18.95. It is available now wherever you would find Rimmel products. Um, that's what one pump looks like. I'm gonna go with two. I'll probably use three to be fair. So they describe this foundation as Rimmel London's number one skincare inspired foundation. They say it is a long lasting formula that's infused with hyaluronic acid and vitamin E. It's supposed to help boost your skin hydration so it appears fresh, plump and smooth and it's also supposed to blend seamlessly into your skin so let's get it on there so they say this is also supposed to uh conceal dark circles and imperfections i would say that this is looking like a really nice natural coverage at the moment it has covered up a little bit of redness on my forehead which is super nice but it's not heavy or cakey looking so you can see this area where I've applied the foundation and compare it to this side, which is a little bit less perfected. So there's how it looks up close. I would not say that this is full coverage. I would say that this is like a medium to natural coverage. Um, I have a little like beauty mark that's just here on my face. Um, and it has, it hasn't covered that. It's just sort of like, softened it a little bit so to me that's full uh, medium coverage full coverage would cover that up essentially um but it has like you know evened out the skin tone it doesn't look heavy it's not set down completely which i actually wouldn't expect from a um a hydrating foundation it does have some sheen to it but it's not like 
it's not glossy <laughs> it's not shiny everywhere or like all over the face it's just got like a nice sort of glow to it and that you know you can really see it on like the high points of the face which I quite like however I am going to set it with powder okay I powdered my face and I've got to say I only had to use the tiniest bit of powder to set that down sometimes when you use like a hydrating foundation uh, if you want to then sort of lock it in with powder because maybe you want to use powder products to bronze with or apply blush and you don't want it to be super wet and sticky uh, if they're really wet foundations you have to use a lot of powder not the case with this um, I only had to use a tiny bit and I feel like it doesn't look so overly matte that you can tell that I had to use half a pan of powder to set it down um, and I will I'll give myself a spritz after this we'll see how it all comes together but before I do that I actually need to finish my eyes and I figured I may as well just use the last few shades in the palette that I've not used yet so Maverick which is this shade I'm gonna pop that on my lower lash line and I'll take Soiree which is this gorgeous gold shade and I'll pop that in the inner corner I think I'll start with Soiree because it's the lighter of the two shades it is a flaky formula I may end up with this all over my face but it's fine oh yeah we got some fallout let's move on to the rest of the face so I actually have some things here from Kaleidos and one of the items is a new brush. This is the angled contour brush. It is the C1. So this brush usually retails for $12, uh, 12 US dollars. At the moment, it's on sale for $9. Uh, now, this is a synthetic brush um, and it is extremely soft. And you know, this is kind of why I'm like, is this worth it? You know, in my opinion, when it comes to synthetic brushes, I'd be more inclined to purchase something like this, which feels insanely soft and beautiful. Um, but I haven't tried Kaleidos brushes yet, so I'm going to. Now, this is, like I said, an angled contour brush. I'm going to use my butter bronzer. And this is a very dense brush. And I am concerned that it's going to apply product like an absolute boss and I'm not going to be ready for that. So I'm just going to like work the excess into my palm just for the first application. So I know, I know how, how it's going to apply. Okay. It's yeah. soft, which is nice. Let's go a bit more. Let's get a bit. A bit more crazy hey. I'm just gonna say this if you want really good quality synthetic brushes but you don't want to spend money on something like this just buy something like this these are beautiful. I'm going to dig into the Sigma Rose Gold, Rose Glow. I thought it said Rose Gold. Rose Glow Cheek Duo. This is what she looks like. I will swatch these. Don't be disappointed. Oh, I was going to say I'm not going to use the highlighter out of this because I have another highlighter to use. However, I feel like I can probably use both. We'll, we'll work it out. So that's the highlighter there. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh my, you're pretty. Uh, and that is the blush. So that is kind of like a rosy, well, makes sense, doesn't it? Rose glow. Um, rosy sort of peachy shade. It's pink, but there's also the mauves in there that you would expect from a rose shade. I feel like there's a touch of orange as well. So there we go. That's nice. I will use them both. I will. To apply the blush, I am going to use this one from Kaleidos. It is the B1 Blush Brush. Oh God, that is a lot of blush. That is way too much blush for me. We're, we're going to take off the majority of that on a tissue. I would prefer to apply like 
the tiniest amount and build it up rather than go in with that and have to deal with it because it's it's too much formula wise it applies nicely all that jazz it is pigmented it's very pigmented and i i don't really like that i like a much much softer pigment blush i use the tiniest amount and like i can i can see it uh another thing that just doesn't like I, I wouldn't use this blush um the tone is just not right for me these sort of rosy tones I don't play well with my complexion at all so it's just not it's not going to be a favorite for me however if you do like the rosy tones then it's applied nicely it's not patchy you know there's nothing wrong with it in terms of a makeup item it's just not a color that you know I particularly like let's dig in to the highlighter I feel like this is gonna be a bit more of my speed um, I'm gonna use this brush from Kaleidos it is the h2 precision highlight brush pick up some products see I'm a lot I'm a lot more generous with the highlighters and I just give a tap off and I'm gonna pop it up here oh that's intense Okay, I'm, to be fair, I probably didn't need to be that generous with the amount of highlight I was picking up. Let's just make my big forehead look even bigger. The highlighter, I like. The blush, it's just not for me, unfortunately, but that's simply down to the colour. In terms of the brushes, I like them. They're nice. Now I do want to apply another highlighter. This is from Kaleidos. This is their newest one. It is Space, Space Age Prophecy Highlight. Um, I'll give this a swatch. Oh my god, I'm not trying to give you the finger. That's so rude. Okay, so this one is a little bit like... It's a multi-chrome, okay? So um, when you pick it up, it's a bit soft in the pan. Um, you can probably see the yellow, the orange, there is also blue and green tones. I'll turn the brightness down. Turn it down quite a bit. Yeah, there you go. You can really kind of see what it's got going on when we do that. It is beautiful. It's, it's a gorgeous shade. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh that's going to be a lot. Hang on, hang on. Yeah. Wow, that's intense. I am wiping off my brush. <laughs> I'm wiping it off. So there it is, blended in. And you can definitely see, you know, there's, there's color shifts. There's a little bit of green in there. And there's like that sort of peachy orange shade, which, oh gosh, I really like that color. Um, in terms of a multi-chrome highlight, I actually really like it. Um, now, it's not something I'm going to wear every day. I, I'm boring and basic. Um, but I like it and it works and it adds something interesting to a look. Um, I This makes me think like with the other um, multi-chromes that I have that are like this, they're designed to be eyeshadows but they have that translucent base with a multi-chrome shift it makes me think I need to play with them more as highlighters um, when it's applied and blended out really well you blend the edges of the actual highlight into the skin so the transition is seamless it looks nice I like it it's a fun I think it's fun last thing lip glosses so these are mini lip glosses from the sigma rendezvous set there are three and they're all shimmery so keep that in mind first up let's swatch them we've got corda rosa so this is a nude shade then we have lilac wine which is a pinky shade don't focus on my face and last but certainly not least we have Secret Garden, which is a bit more of like a berry, it's kind of like a berry with some brown tones, but that's them there. I'm definitely going to go Corda Rosa. They don't have a scent. They definitely look quite metallic. 
so historically I'm not into like metallic shimmery type lip glosses however throughout 2020 I've used a few and I find that they don't offend me as much as they once did mm, but this is not just a shimmery lip gloss I feel like this is a metallic finish lip gloss there is a lot of sparkle in here and that's not really my jam um, I think if you like if you like the metallic lip effect then you might really enjoy these but I don't think they're gonna be a favorite for me because they're too metallic I am going to try the others on because I'm here and I may as well so let's go in with lilac wine okay interesting that one is less metallic more sort of soft shimmer so that has a little bit of sparkle but it doesn't have that like full-on metallic finish that Corderosa does I can say the formula is um, it's got some nice slip to it feels like it's gonna be really hydrating but can you see that careful not to put on too much because um, it'll get you know goopy and we'll finish with secret garden this looks like it's gonna be quite metallic as well it looks like it's got yeah yeah that's definitely more of that metallic finish I think the base color of that is fairly pretty um, but I'm not into that metallic look it's just not really my jam um, but there we go that is the last shade and I think it actually works well with the eyes so you know at least the colors pair well with what is in the pack all right guys so that is it for me today feel free to leave your comments down below about anything that you saw in this video and I will catch you in the next one bye